Okay, let's try to understand how this class works. Okay, I will create a simple application uh, and try to use the object for the point. Okay, I first create an object. Maybe I call it my application. X, uh, X, K, the app. Uh, there I want to create a value called P1 point. So as this point and then value called P2 which is the type of point and maybe has five and six and print P1 then P2. Okay. So what? So when you try to compile that, uh, you uh, we have to save that first. Uh, so I save it somewhere. And I call it as my app dot scala right. and then I sing I try to compile it so you see it says uh, return error say point uh, uh, found value point not found so there are no such uh, object for the class in other words called point. So this is user defined data types. So the regular way of doing it, creating a class called point, we can create a class uh, called uh, point uh, to represent uh, these uh, point operations. Uh, there. Uh, so maybe we say class point which take a and B. and then define uh, functions uh, x which is uh, integer basically it's a and then y and integer and b b so this b we take and b right so now let's that. So we have point now, but still we have error. Right? So, so why? So if here we want to create now this point uh, of that, we need to use keyword called new. So similarly, if we want to print like that, we need to create, create override. Override function to string. To string function and that is equal to, we say, print bracket. Then then uh, last sign and then say print x and then say plus and then print uh, colon then plus then print y and then close the print scale and then x value and then print a 
comma and then y value uh, y value and then the close this so after that uh, we can basically should be able to run that so class so i misspelled that so you see now it works so there is a class call point which encapsulates x and y values and then there is a string two string methods implemented so i can then create two points of this object point type and then print it so if i want to compare and then print the result to see whether p1 equal to p2 let's see whether it uh, sorry it should be p2 p2 and run that so it may Return false. So actually, it it compares not these two points. So I guess so. So let's see this and then execute. So you see, it still return false. So even this p one point and then p two point. I say p1 equal p2, it returns false. Because actually they are not comparing these parameters of this point, p1 and p2. It's just they are comparing their address object values. So this, they are obviously two different. So because of that, it returns false. So that means this equal, it's not worth. Right? So if you really want to use that points as new data structure, so you should define that class as case class. So that's a simple uh, magic in this Scala functional language. So you just put case class. If you define that as case class, we don't need this as well. So then we create a new data type called point, which works as we wish. So I save it and I execute. So you see now, it works. So you see now it re returned true because these two points are equal. Uh, plus it print point P1 and P2 on the terminal. So that without having two string method in this class. So this is a simple case class example. So if you want to add methods to this, you can add them. So for example, let's say we want to add a method called point move, which move each point with dx and dy distance. So then I can add a method or equal it as function maybe. Okay call uh, maybe move which take uh, dx the how many points we want to move p1 and how many points time we want to move the y axis and i want to create a new point after moving this existing point so if you want to do so, and this class is case class, what you have to do is say move dx Levi to create a new point. All right? We should do this. Uh, dot x plus dx and this dot y plus dy so 
so then maybe i move create a new value called point 3 by i don't need this new keyword anymore because they are face class and then i say value p3 is uh, p1 dot move by 2 and 3 so now i print uh, uh, p1 point p1 and then point p3 for example and want to compare p1 and p3 So you see, my point P one now I print here is two and three, which created the year. no key new keywords now. It's like regular data object, and then my point P three I'm printing here P three is P one move two three. So I add two to this four and three to this four six. So obviously, when we compare P one and P three, they are different. So maybe I can create a value uh, called P4 is P1 copy, and I compare P1 and P4. So this case classes has a method copy. So I create exact copy of that. So then I run that. Sorry, I, maybe I put P4 here to see better. It copy. I'm running it. I'm running it again. So P4 is a copy of point P1. So you see. So then my point P1 and P4 is equal. So I run it twice. That's what it is. We run it back. So you see, point P1 and P2, P4 is both are equal. So it returned true. So I don't implement copy method in this class. It's in, it's already available. So maybe I can partially copy. For example, I can say uh, I can kind of like uh, partially copy it. Uh, so there I say like uh, uh, my x-axis a is kind of uh, not two, x is five, b is still three. So I create a copy by putting x values to five, but I want to keep y value still three. So then I run the program. I create a point p four now. So you see, x value is five, and then y value keep to three. So if you wish, you can add uh, more, more kind of more methods to the point class. So like here, point move. So maybe you can like equal. You can create a, a method point plus like that. Point plus is equal, which take a point like that. And uh, what is that? Assign to a point where this x plus, maybe we call it instead of p, let's call it that. And we add it that x, that x. And this y plus that y. So that's point addition plus. So now instead of comparing that, we I print point P1 uh, plus maybe let's say point is P2. I want to add P1 plus P2 and create a new point. So 
let's see. Get the eight bucks. So you see my point P1 is this, P2 is this, P1 plus P2 is 224, 336. My point P1 plus P2. So I add <coughs> new operator plus here by defining this that, uh, function. When you define a function on top of data, we call it as a method in function and programming or object oriented programming also we call it as methods. So but here, the functional programming, you use this case class to encapsulate data and methods, data and functions, data and functions. <coughs> so we can use them now here, like in very short and meaningful way. So that's how point case class works. So maybe you can add uh, other methods to that, like uh, take the distance of point and take the inverse of points, like that to the point. So I will give some uh, exercise so you can do it yourself. Okay, let's define a different case then. Maybe I define a case uh, which we discussed, case clock. Maybe, maybe here I, using a point class, uh, I will show you an example of uh, pattern matching. And so I create here maybe anonymous uh, anonymous uh, from uh, fiction uh, for let's say print in order which take uh, ps and return is different uh, prints based on the type of this point p so we for doing that we say p match these cases what are the cases I say first my first case if p match to a coin on let's say point zero zero the given point to this anonymous function for print info is zero zero it returns say point origin. Maybe I define a different case. If point match uh, with uh, anything, and maybe we say zero, then we say this is kind of a point on a x is zero. That means point on a y axis, right? If uh, sorry, if y is zero, that is point on x axis. So uh, given y is zero, this is point on x axis, right? Then the other case, uh, point uh, say a zero and anything. That is, uh, sorry, I should be arrow. That is point on y axis. Right? Right. And then uh, we can define a default case. Uh, case like this, uh, maybe default case for any other for any other situations. Uh, we say 
you just print the, this point. As again, we want to lose. Right? So we call now here this print info function. Print info. Now point P1. Point P1 is this. Right? So I very commented. So I run that. So there is a point P1 and call an anonymous function uh, P. Uh, that is the mistake. Uh, print info. Uh, take a P as a point. So then transform P match. You see, so it print p point two three on the terminal. This one, and since it ma not match to any of these cases, it execute the default case and print the point again two times. It prints. So assume now we pass a to p one as two zero, and run the same code. So it print point two three on the terminal. Okay, so it don't print anything because I don't tell to print. Print ln. I need to tell ln this message, and then I say print ln this message. Like that. Sorry, I, I should make a mistake. So you see, so I am passing point P one to printing for anonymous function. So this is pointing for anonymous function. So y axis is zero, it matched to this, and say point on x axis. So similarly, we can define a point like this P2 and pass the print P point P2 and pass P2 to that. So it should say point on uh, y axis, right? Point on y axis. Right. Like that. So if you kind of pass 0, 0, it might say point on origin. So you see point on origin. So like that, we can. We can uh, use match case statements. And create functions which match to the different cases and execute whatever the actions we want. Right. So maybe I can take my other example, case class, class which I call as Clock time. Clock time, which take uh, hour as int and then minute as int. So it's a very simple class. That is only the case class clock time. There are no methods, nothing inside it, right? You see? So this definition is. Uh, Kind of, it's basically not necessarily needed. So there we can uh, 
me. Mm -hmm. uh, the clock time, we just need that. Actually, we don't need this as well. So I forgot in the point class, if since I define it as a case class, so these input parameters automatically make as values, so we don't need this as well. You know, want to have a case class. So we can just call them as x and y. We don't need this a and b and assign to this and things like that. So in the point case class. So it has auto x and y. So then we can do like x that and y that and so on. So then here we can say like x here. So it's worse. So you see point case class, we don't have these definitions functions to assign those values to some other. So it's automatically make them as values. So it's very abstract, simple definition. This is case point. All right. Similarly, I can make case clock time like here. So if I kind of uh, uh, instead of want to have two times, maybe I can uh, like uh, t1 uh, and then drop time, let's say six, and then maybe time uh, t2, drop uh, time, let's say 18 now, and then I call it as I uh, just use this only and create maybe print info method. Now take uh, t as clock time, return then t max. So I say maybe it is uh, 18 now. Uh, I tell it sunset. Eighteen hour. It may be any minutes. And similarly, I say six hours and any minutes. I say sunrise. Sunrise. And uh, maybe any other. I just print a right. There's a printing function which works on top of clock time. So I create then uh, clock time t1 yeah, on top, and then I print that, and then I also print clock time t2. So I then maybe print and for t1 and then execute it. Uh, uh, case class is uh, wait here. And then should be clock time. And this also should be. When you run that now, T1, ah, oh, sorry, we don't need this now. Let's try that. So you see, this T1, T1 and T2 printed in the terminal, say sunrise, because I pass. Point T1, T1 is uh, T1 is six hours, right? This match here and sunrise entered on turn. Yeah. You see my definition of this 
clock time is just this case class clock time. So automatically create values like here. We don't need like that. Uh, h equal or something like that. We don't need this. We don't need uh, string methods. Uh, two string methods we don't need like that. So you see case class nicely attract data. So those data then can be passed into the functions. So here we are passing that data called clock time. So user define data type. Right pass to the anonymous function called printed. So and then using match case statement, I do pattern matching here. Pattern matching here with the match case statement. And then do very take various actions. So you see case class is very nice uh, techniques which introduce in this Scala program where you could use to define your, your own user defined data structures. And then you can pass those data structures into various functions and operates and you can pattern match those uh, objects or the data in those case classes and so on. Okay, that's it. So based on this uh, demonstration, I will pause the exercise to the LMS uh, later on. Thank you.